If you are a fan of TV or movies right now, I mean, is there a better time? There is so much content out there, and every single day we're getting more and more. And with the rise of subscription services, streaming subscription services right now, I mean, we just have a wealth of content at our fingertips. And the company that has me pretty hyped is YouTube Originals. So, did anybody else see Cobra Guy? Yeah! I saw that. And then, right after that, I binge watched all of this great show called Impulse, and what quality, entertaining, thrilling, it's got depth. So I am really excited right now to introduce you guys to the creative team behind Impulse. Are you ready to meet them? First up in the stage right now, he is a director that I admire quite a bit. He's done Edge of Tomorrow and The Born Identity, and right now he is the executive producer of Impulse. We have Doug Lyman joining us on stage. We also have two guys that you might be familiar with from the show Suits. We have Gene Klein and David Park. But Impulse is so fortunate to have showrunner Lauren LaFranc here. And now it's time to meet the stars of the show. First, our, our leading lady, Henrietta, or rather, Henry Coles. Biggest compliment because uh, of all my films, Jumper's the one that I felt like I just never quite made something that really connected with me emotionally. It just didn't just didn't get there, um, and I wanted to go back. And I thought uh, TV would be a, a better canvas for me to do it. Um, but I didn't want to repeat myself. I didn't want to make basically the mistakes I had made before. Um, and so the best compliment I could have, have been getting on Impulse is it's. It's not what I was expecting. Because it's still me, right? That's the problem, is like, you know, like, just because I say I want to, you know, learn and do, and learn from what I consider my mistakes and do better, it's still me, so I might actually just make the same mistakes again. <laughs> and uh, now, Gene uh, and Dave, I was curious if you could give a little insight into working with YouTube in particular, because you guys have had experience in this industry. So going into a show like this, what exactly were you expecting? Did you have any kind of anticipation level with distributing a show via a platform like YouTube? You know, it turned out, um, <laughs> it, it, it was, we're start. yeah, we're going to start. Um, we've had an amazing experience. It's been incredible. They've been uh, creatively supportive of us, and we were able to kind of tell the stories that we wanted to tell, and, and we got all 
the resources to shoot the show the way we want to shoot it, which is pretty amazing. You don't always get that. Um, but, you know, I think we may have been one of the first scripted shows they ordered. Um, so it felt like they were kind of figuring it out, and we were figuring it out with them. So it was, uh, it was an incredible learning experience at the same time for both of us. And they were wonderful, but at the same time, selling it to YouTube in the first place was a surprise to the two of us. Uh, Doug had a meeting with YouTube about what he thought was something totally different and accidentally sold the show in the process. Because we didn't even know they had a channel. <laughs> yeah. And he called up and he said, you know, Dave and I were working on finding a writer, which we hadn't even done yet. And Doug called and said, I think I sold the show. And we said, what show? <laughs> But they were, and which speaks to how great YouTube's been. They were enthusiastic from, you know, the first moment that I talked about it. YouTube Originals has been around for a little while now, but between uh, this and, as I mentioned earlier, Cobra Kai, it feels like a, a game-changing year. And, you know, part of the reason that I'm drawn to shows like that is that there's also an added depth to it. So, Lauren, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the idea of pairing something with a superhero-like vibe, something cool and fun, like being able to teleport with something a little more serious, like a character dealing with sexual assault. Yeah, um, I've worked on a number of genre shows before and, and some superhero shows, and I think for me, for me to want to take on a show like this, I, I wanted it to be so grounded and have the characters feel really honest, and I thought, what Doug did in the pilot was so excellent and set me up for that kind of success to be able to do. We have an amazing talent, which made it all the easier. Um, but it felt like, for me, genre storytelling is so amazing because it's heightened, but it's always been telling kinds of stories that before TV's become what it has, it's been harder to tell stories like that. And, and stories that are often of minorities, um, people who are going through kind of traumatic events um, kind of the little guy out there, or the little girl out there. Um, and so for me, I saw, you know, an opportunity to tell a story largely about sexual assault and in this woman's coming of age journey, coupling that with teleportation, which I think is really relevant to what Henry goes through during that assault. Part of it is she dissociates and kind of disconnects emotionally from the event and then uh, physically uh, as well. And so, and that was, you know, a tribute to what Doug had established with the pilot, and then I just took that and, and ran with it. And for the very talented trio down there, I've spoken to a number of actors who have said to me, oh, I take a little bit of the role home with me. So one, did you do that? And two, if you didn't, what quality about your character do you admire most? Um, I definitely took the role home with me to my husband's dismay. I was very depressed the entire time we shot. Um, but I think with uh, something like assault, it's it's so real and it happens to so many people, men and women, it deserves that kind of commitment. And I was ready for that. I spoke to a therapist that meets with mainly victims of assault. I spoke to people in my life who I know have been assaulted and I really dug into that pain because it deserves that attention. Um, but my favorite part about playing Henry is like the physicality of her. She has this very wide stance and she walks very heavy in her foot. And when I first auditioned for Henry, I, I got into this sort of, I don't know, the way that she stands and walks and carries herself is different from the way that I carry myself and it, it really helped me to get into her character. For me, I didn't necessarily take it home with me, but I had the task of being the rock for Henry, being the support and the sounding board. Jenna is the first person that Henry tells when this takes place. And what I think is so wonderful about our relationship is that Jenna and Henry as characters are very opposite. But when this event happens, we really get to see their true colors and their guards have to come down a little bit, but especially Jenna. She's going to be compassionate. She's going to be there for Henry. And they really grow such a, a tight bond and they have different qualities they see in each other that they like to see more of in themselves. And they learn from each other and they grow. And that's probably my favorite part. And I would say my favorite part about Jenna is just her unwavering 
strength and ability to be supportive in this situation and be there for Henry. And I would say, uh, Deputy Anna Holche, she gets into town and knows something is not right, uh, and she's got a strong sense of justice, which I really admired about her because she's a little bit more proactive than I think I would be. Um, and, I, and I appreciated being able to play someone like that. I think though, similarly, I did grow up in a very small town. Uh, we were one of very few black families in the town. So her sense of feeling like an outsider is something I could relate to immediately. And, and to be able to portray that, it was, it was easy to slip into for sure. And there's a, uh, there's a very diverse ensemble here, and again, another element I really appreciate about the show is it feels like it's a group of characters where everybody out there, no matter who you are, no matter what you're into in life right now, you could find your favorite. So not including your own characters, open to the entire panel. Do you have a particular impulse character that really sticks out as your favorite? Towns. You always say Towns. <laughs> always say Towns. I yeah, absolutely love Towns. But town. everybody loves Towns. People message me on Instagram, they're like, what's going on with Towns? And I'm like, I'm Henry. <laughs> I don't know. I love him too. <laughs> Speaking of towns, though, I am a huge fan of Orphan Black. Does anybody know what they're I noticed a lot, of, uh, a lot of links, I guess I would say. Is, is that about the shooting location more than anything? Did someone on that show hook you guys up? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it has to do with Toronto. No, a lot of television in the Slami family. Uh, Doug, one thing I wanted to ask you about too, because I happen to have been reading this in an interview did, you did with the uh, Collider. I'm scared. You had I'm mentioned say a lot of things that I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> at the very beginning, the uh, the central character of Impulse was uh, someone a little different than what we wound up with. So I'm curious to know more about that version of the character, and then what made you change your mind? Um, you know, my uh, initial sort of approach to the the show, and I, I probably would have ended up making the same mistakes I made on Jumper, but was was a character who um, wanted to be in this town and wanted to belong, um, and this the superpower keeps sending her away. And uh, we were bringing, uh, we were starting auditions, and Maddie came in, and, and the three of us uh, watching her performance, just like this, and afterwards, <laughs> Uh, I mean, there were no microphones. They were mics. We're, we're literally, there's like a table just like this, and she's there doing her performance, and she leaves the room, and, and we were all floored, and, and Dave and Jean were like, it's obviously her. I mean, she's a huge star. And I'm like, <laughs> and I said, I, 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 said, I totally agree. She lights up the room, but she's totally wrong for the part. And, and they said, but I said, I said, we have to keep looking, and they said, she's such a huge star. And I said, I know, but if you think about it, if we cast her, I really would want to rewrite the whole show, because I would want the character to be like this, this, and this. And then Dave said, well, wouldn't that be better? <laughs> and I was like, you know, as I was saying, I was like, actually, that's a way more interesting show. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's cast her and let's rewrite the show around the qualities that, that Maddie is, uh, brought into the room. Good work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, how are you feeling with the material you auditioned with? Were you getting that kind of vibe yourself, or was this a surprise? <laughs> uh, I thought I was totally wrong for the part. <laughs> Sorry for swearing. <laughs> Hearing that, I wanted the part so bad that when I heard I got the part, I sobbed for like a full five minutes. Um, so if I knew I was wrong for the part in the process, I would, I mean, I was already having a panic attack like the whole time waiting to find out. I felt but you, like that no, you had already, worse. you had reinvented the part as you came in. Like that's the thing, is, is you came in and you gave a performance and you had envisioned a version of Henry that went so far beyond where we were in our thinking of her. What are you going to do with that compliment? <laughs> and then she was wondering why all these, love you so much. All these rewrites were happening and we were like, the rewrites are happening because of you. 
I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> when all those pages were changing, you were wondering why you were getting pages at the last minute. It was because of you. Aww. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to all have a big group hug after this. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be special. I a need to solve very so bad problems there. <laughs> Lord, I wanted to talk a little bit now about the antagonists of the show because there's a bunch of them, but what makes, you know, I'll say the bad guys because they do bad things, but the thing that makes them not your typical cookie cutter villain is they are individuals who do bad things, but they feel like fully fleshed out people. And I think that's really important. Yeah, that was very important to me. I mean, I don't, I don't see the world with, you know, heroes and villains. I don't see it the way Towns does in a lot of ways. Um, and I think that's for all of us, we're all complicated people and we do things that are bad and we do things that are, that are good and somewhere in between is where a lot of us lie. Um, I think, you know, Bill Boone, for instance, is a guy, and when I was talking to David about this with his character, that he thinks he's doing everything good, he thinks he's being a great father and he has a temper that is right here and doesn't explode. I think scarier people are the ones that are always on the cusp of exploding rather than the ones that are really aggressive about it. Um, I think with Clay, he's a young man who assaults a young woman and for some reason he thinks he can do that. And I think there's something interesting in exploring that to hopefully, without you know beating people over the head, teaching them something about why young men think they can do that sometimes and, and where does he come from and what is his family like and what is he lacking and what is he searching for. And then with um, Lucas, uh, played by Craig Arnold, he's someone also that I feel like he's this guy in this very male-dominated environment and he's trying to figure himself out and he constantly gets in his own way. And so I think it's important for every single character, especially the villains, to feel complicated and interesting and not one note. Because, you know, I've seen that before and it just doesn't ever feel real to me. And uh, Maddie, uh, Sarah, and Luca, did you guys have any scenes that you particularly enjoyed shooting, or maybe in the end, ones that you were most proud of? Because, I mean, I've got like a laundry list of standout scenes here. All of the scenes where Sarah and I get to smoke pot together <laughs> are my favorite scenes. It's on my list as well. Yeah, those I'm were really fun. Fun fact, I remember the scene when we, our first scene in episode two where we smoked together. Yeah. I have never partaken in this, in, in this drug before. And <laughs> I remember getting the script and I, I'd gotten a one-liner beforehand. And so they'll generalize the, what the scene's about before you read the scene. And it was Jenna and Henry smoke pot. And my first thought was, please, please let it be Jenna's first time smoking. Please, I have no idea how to do this. And thankfully it was. And then. Um, Maddie had to show me how to use it, and I remember it said that Jenna... Because it was not my first time. <laughs> At all. <laughs> and then I remembered that it said Jenna coughs, and I was so worried that I would have to fake cough. <laughs> that was not a problem, guys. <laughs> that was not an issue. But in all seriousness, um, any scene that I got to do with Maddie was such a, such a gift. She is by far the most giving sea partner I've ever had. She is, guys, and I love her. I'm excited we get to keep doing it. I don't like her. Oh, <laughs> it's very one-sided. It hurts. It's a little one-sided. <laughs> it's awkward for us all to watch. We're still holding hands, but she doesn't like me. <laughs> Rubbing your arm. <laughs> kind of weird for you, or? <laughs> Oddly not. <laughs> Anuka? Yes. Take this away. I'm gonna save you, girls. <laughs> No, I had um, I had a scene in episode four where um, I, I my character has a panic attack, and what was fun about it is this has never happened to me before. They put a contraption on my body where the camera was mounted to it, uh, and I got to basically direct myself and <laughs> go off and, and lose my mind. And it was actually it was just really fun. It was odd and awkward, and I was nervous about it. But once I had the thing, it was like, it was fantastic, it was fun. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. They strapped one to me in the pilot, but it was like the back of my head, so I didn't get to do. They didn't trust me to direct it. Which I thought <laughs> was shot by the You way. were directing yourself. <laughs> you got that on you, Maddie, and we sent you off. <laughs> 
And I'm going to take this chance to remind you guys, we are going to save 20 minutes to answer all of your questions. So if you have any, it might be a good time to uh, not run, but walk to the microphone and line up for those questions. So get on that. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about Comic-Con in general right now. Are there any first timers here on the panel? Yeah. Okay. so far that stood out to you and if you're just getting here now what is on your to-do list because as much as you want to be here to celebrate impulse you have to experience San Diego Comic Con. Yes we want to see all the costumes. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little overstimulated oh, so absolutely. far <laughs> um, and I'm very prone to anxiety in large crowds but I'm still excited. <laughs> Did anyone give you any uh, any Comic Con tips before getting here today, especially before hitting hitting your first Comic Con panel? <laughs> they just said be ready. What? <laughs> I was looking at Lauren. Maddie keeps sometimes she just stares at me endlessly, and then I don't know what to do, and then I stare back, and then she's like, "Don't look at me." I admire her <laughs> so much. It's distracting. I'm talking about Comic Con costumes. Yeah, I don't know what. what? <laughs> Maddie, Maddie accomplished her to-do list earlier. She said as we were walking in this morning that she just wanted one person to come up to her and say how much she liked the show. Oh my god, I was so happy! I hugged her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I sort of regret that we, uh, that Henry doesn't sort of wear a cape as part of her, uh, as her superhero costume. Season two. Season two. Yeah. 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 You know, she just has like a little splash of paint in her hair, so it's, it does, it's not going to make for the greatest Comic-Con costume. <laughs> we should talk about capes and how ineffective they generally are. <laughs> like, always tangle. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Henry has a red hat. That's her uh, costume. Yeah, yeah, the two. The cape is your tomato. Yeah, very <laughs> good. That was very <laughs> The beanie. Before I turn it over to the audience now, we obviously have this season two announcement. There's a lot of people that are very excited. You guys just found out, but are you able to offer any sort of timeline or, you know, just to give us a little bit of a, a gauge on when we can expect to see more? Because I would like more now. <laughs> Sometime next year. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be great, guys. <laughs> I, you know, it's so early. Uh, we're all really excited, I think, to get back to work. I'm so honored to be able to keep writing for these ladies and our whole cast. And, um, you know, the journey continues. It's very big. I apologize. I know that's still an Sometimes it's All right. Are we ready for, for some questions out there? Who's that for? All of us. All of us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I wish I knew where... Oh, there you are. Because <laughs> we have TVs down here. Here under the thing. That's why I was looking here. Um, I was a, a lot like Henry when I was uh, a teenager. I sort of didn't really want to let anyone in or let anyone get to know me. So getting into the mindset of Henry was easy for me um, in that way. I think for me, a way that I, I was, I'm actually very similar to Jenna in a lot of ways. And a big thing. Hot smoking. <laughs> yes, yeah. hot smoking being one of them. <laughs> um, but a big theme for Jenna is self-discovery, and she has a tendency to really put other people's needs before her own, which is something that I definitely have as well. And through season one, she goes through this journey of self-discovery and really taking the time to figure out what she wants and who she is. And funnily enough, that's really something that I was doing exactly while we were shooting the season. So it kind of just all aligned. Yeah, and I think um, similar to what I was saying earlier, just being um, somebody who grew up in a, in a very small town, uh, one of the very few black families, and feeling that sense of, of being outside, but soldiering on in spite of it, and um, just, you know, keeping on, and that's, uh, that's something that I completely relate to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for the question. Can we talk a little bit about Henry's abilities? Because I, again, I know you guys just found out about season two now, but how do you gauge how far of a step ahead to take with her ability? She's first finding herself now, but you know, do you have some sort of multi-season show Bible that you're following? Just a, from a starting place that we wanted the superpower uh, 
to be more of a curse. Um, to, to uh, you know, which is why I keep sending her back to her, her bedroom for, for so much of, of, of the first season. And, um, you know, I don't see abandoning that. I see that that sort of puts us in a kind of a unique space. And, and obviously, um, with um, the, you know, amazing sensitivity that Lauren's brought to this, you know, it's, it's forever tied to this sexual assault. And it, that's something that is, is not something that sort of just gets resolved and then we move on. It, it's, it's, there's always going to be sort of a trauma for Henry connected to her ability. Um, you know, it's not going to over, it's just going to be part of what makes her who she is. She has other traumas, you know, with her, her, her family life is, is, has, you know, she has, you know, issues with her father. So, you know, we're all made up of the traumas that, you know, from, you know, it's not one particular trauma that fully defines us, but um, that's that's kind of where uh, we see the superpowers are resting. Interesting. We've got another uh, audience question. Hi. 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 Um, Hi. I just want to let you guys know first that I love love the show. I watched it all in one day. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, I was a fan of Jumper, the original one. So when I saw that you were recreating it, I. It's really amazing, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so my question is, one of the characters that I really liked was Lucas and how he was kind of teetering on being good and bad. Are we gonna explore that more in season two? Is he gonna do something that can redeem himself? Because I feel like Clay and his dad can't at this point, but Lucas still has a chance. Yeah, Lucas. Yeah, that's the answer to the question earlier. Really. Lucas is my favorite. Oh. Yeah, Lucas is one of my favorite characters as well. I definitely think he's one of the most complicated characters we got to write, and, and we had a wealth of those. But um, yeah, I, I think Lucas is someone that is interesting to explore because he he has good intentions, but he doesn't know what to do uh, with them, and he constantly, as I said before, kind of gets in his own way. And so, you know, we see him with the Mennonites at the end, and so I'm excited to explore what that means for him, why he's there, how he got there, and what is going to happen now that he is there with them. Thank you for the question. <laughs> uh, hi, hi, my question is for Doof. Uh, what can we expect of, of your next project? Um, well, I'm, uh, you know, I'll probably be here next summer, uh, Maybe we'll be, you know, showing season two here, uh, <laughs> since season two, uh, um, and also uh, Chaos Walking, which I, I'm doing with uh, Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley. Um, so I, I imagine I'd be here with that as well. Definitely looking forward to that one. We also uh, we don't have Missy on the panel today, and I don't know. Maybe it's just because my mind is often going to the movie Dodgeball, but for whatever reason. <laughs> didn't expect this kind of work from her and she really blew me away and that's such a touching and deep emotional connection that uh, you have with her Maddie so I just wanted to talk a little bit about working with Missy because she deserves to be highlighted here. We love Missy. Yeah. The, the incredible thing about you know Missy's experience first season of the show was that she was a new mom and she was going through a lot of the emotions of being a new mom and wrestling with being mom on screen. So she really completely tapped into that and it went from being what everybody assumes a comedic actress to being this incredible dramatic actress. Well, and, and Maddie can speak to uh, working with her in particular as a mother and daughter, but I will say that you've, there's so many times that these really incredible actors and actresses are pigeonholed where they do comedy, they do one thing, so everyone's like, well, let's just keep giving them those roles and they don't think that they have something else in them, and I think Missy's such a good example of someone who is so wildly talented, and I'm so glad that she got the opportunity, and really was so excellent in this dramatic turn for her. Yeah, doing scenes with Missy is one of my favorite parts of the show, because we luckily had such an instant, very deep connection, um, and I love her so much, personally, just as myself, um, so that made the scenes a lot more richer. But she's just so, I don't know that I've ever been with an actress who just, her emotions are just always right here at the top of her throat. She can be laughing in between takes and they'll call action and she can just fall at the drop of a hat and nothing is fake, everything is real. Her emotions are just always there. Um, 
and it's really beautiful to watch. She's so talented. So talented. She's also really funny and amazing to be around. Yeah, she, <laughs> she is. is. She, yeah, she changes the energy in a room for sure. Absolutely. In the process of doing some press for the show, we found out that she was really nervous about uh, having been pigeonholed and having been so much comedy and coming to drama. And all of us were surprised because she killed it um, from day one on set. And so it was shocking to hear that she was had some insecurities about that. Is she the one to kind of lighten the vibe on set? Yeah. Because it, again, Her it's very shiny material. material. You can't I stop think it. I bring lighten the vibe anywhere down. she is. <laughs> I bring it down and she brings it up, so it just comes to this medium area as I'm here and she's... We've got another question. Hi, thank you all so much for being here. Um, the effects and stunts are so incredible. Uh, I was curious if there was any bloopers or mishaps that happened along the way. Bloopers and stunts are bad together. <laughs> thank God we didn't have real... <laughs> Um, serious ones. There was a scene that took a long time to yeah. shoot. Yeah. The bathroom yes. teleportation scene. You remember. Oh, yes. I'll never forget. Neither will I. Um, <laughs> yeah, we spent a whole very, very, very long morning shooting that one scene. But it turned out okay, I think. Yeah, I think we did. We did yeah. a lot of practical elements mixed with visual effects, which um, a lot of shows don't always do the practical, which is, I think, what made things like the truck being crushed and the bathroom exploding feel really like grounded and real, And but that stuff takes time. And then there's also, like, Maddie's stunt double had to hoist herself a lot above the bed, above camera, and hold herself to drop onto the bed, or, like, I did that too. Desk. I know, Maddie did that too. <laughs> Don't leave me no. out. Maddie didn't, you didn't hit the desk with your face. That's true. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, I have A little factoid about the, the teleportation and, and the sort of violence of it, um, compared to, say, Jumper, um, is that uh, I originally, you know, I made Jumper for Fox, and I originally had approached Fox about saying, I don't feel like I, I feel like I could do better, let's do it as a TV series. And, uh, and they said, no. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Like, we have a pretty good track record in television. Like, yeah, no. Uh, and so uh, I went and got the, se the rights to the sequel novel myself. And then we sold it to YouTube, and we're like, can, can we really just do this? Can we get away with it? I mean, here we are on the stage. Yes, we have. Dave's sort of cringing because he's like, don't talk about it. And it is the elephant in the room. We just went and did it. Uh, and uh, it was like, at some point, someone's going to say, you can't just go do that. Um, but we did. But there were lawyers involved who said, here's what you can't do. And one of the things they said is, you can't make the jumps look like they looked in Jumper. And you can't Fox, and you can't call them jumps. And you can't call them jumps. You can't. Okay. <laughs> so you have to make them look different, uh, which is tough because it's still me, right? I'm like, maybe I'm just going to come up with the same idea again. Uh, so I really was like, we need to really radically rethink how we're going to do it. And I thought, like, wouldn't it be cool if it was really violent? Like, cause when you do anything for the first time, it's not elegant, right? It's it takes practice, and so. And from that sort of violent thing, we ended up getting the storyline of Clay getting crushed in the pickup truck. So it was a uh, kind of a gift that's kept giving. Um, and that, but that's that's the origin of how the jump, the teleports, came to look so violent. Thank you, Fox. Sure. <laughs> Next question. Um, hi, I'm a uh, software engineer by day and aspiring indie game developer by night, and I've got a pretty good idea of how hard one can be on oneself when you're creative, and so I really wanted to kind of articulate that. Um, I wouldn't really call what you did with Jumper um, something that really contained mistakes. I, I mean, I'm a fan. I saw this thing, I bought the movie, and I, I Thank you. Bit, so, you know, you made a choice at one point, now maybe you figured out how to crystallize and distill this thing into something more powerful, but um, yeah, I wouldn't feel bad about anything you did before. Here's my question. Um, Good for you. Teleportation, and based on something you just said, um, I think the violent aspect of teleportation is really worth exploring. And have you considered uh, going further in that direction? Because if you go into kind of the hard science, 
something like this, it would take an incredible amount of energy to physically move somebody just out of thin air from one place to another. And have you considered how dangerous that could become and how you might work that sort of thing into your stories later? Yeah, I mean, we, we consulted with the Science and Entertainment Exchange, which, if you guys don't know about it, is this really great organization, and they, they, you ask them what you need, you tell them what you need, and then they pair you with scientists and physicists, and we spoke to a lot of um, astrophysicists in particular about, you know, what the potential is for teleportation and how it could, you know, could work hypothetically, and there is a violence to it and an, and an inertia, and we use that, and we, you know, we have a lot of rules that we set for how we shoot things in particular and how we shoot those teleportations and thinking of it as, um, you know, implosions and things sucking towards her and what that means. And then, you know, Henry ends up with wanting her body to bring someone out of an event and then she ends up wanting to resist someone and doesn't really even realize what she does and that person gets split in half um, through the wormhole. So. We've just begun to explore that, and I, I can safely say we'll continue to go down that rabbit hole and see what else is there. And uh, thank you for what you said about John Brady. You know, I know I, I can be hard on myself, as you've said, you're hard on yourself when, when you're creating your, your games, and, and it's a, uh, um, you know, the, I made a film called Swingers, and I first time I saw the first edit, I cried, and then I, uh, years later, we're doing like an anniversary re-release, and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be, Great, I'm gonna go find that first edit and just sort of be inspiring to filmmakers to see like how bad a first edit can be and then, you know, what you can do in, in the editing room. And I found that first edit and I looked at it, I was like, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's actually not all that different than the final one. I don't know why. And, and then even on Impulse, there was something within season one that I felt like before we put it out, I was like, I really want to go back and reshoot re that. And, and, and Lauren was pregnant and I said like, I, I know you're going to give birth soon, but like, <laughs> if you went and rewrote this, you know, I would go beg for the money and I'll go shoot it. And like, then he put me into labor. <laughs> I, I, it is not a joke. Literally, I was like starting to breathe a little harder on the phone with him. And I was like, is that, what's happening? And then we hung up. I was like, okay, I'm going to think about that, Doug. And I was like, I think I'm going to have a baby, actually. <laughs> uh, so I had a baby instead. <laughs> and I never got to go back and do that, but now we'll have season two. <laughs> yeah. We have one more question. I'm looking forward to this last question. I saw you two powwowing over there. You got like a really firm head nod, so pressure's on. What's the question? So actually, um, it's a great show. I was introduced to this, actually, because Perry mentioned it on a podcast I was listening to, so thank you for that. Thank you, um, Perry. <laughs> So my question is uh, to the producers, uh, the, the amazing thing about this show is the periphery of the cast. Every one of the actors does such a, a wonderful job of making their character believable and part of the story. And it seems like every episode another character is kind of stealing the show. How did you kind of put the cast together for the show? Um, well, I mean, I'll just start and then let these guys take it that, you know, our goal, uh, you know, like when I did, uh, the Born Identity, it was, I was doing my first action movie, I said, I, I want to do an action movie where uh, if you took the action sequences out and you just watched the dialogue scenes, it would actually be a compelling story. Because a lot of action movies might just be sort of like rudimentary dialogue just to get to the next action sequence. And so when we were putting Impulse together, we said to ourselves, I want to create a world that even if somebody never teleports, you would tune into the next episode, that the characters and the world are compelling enough before you add the teleportation. And that was kind of the, the challenge that, that Dave and Gene and I uh, gave to each other. And the real credit for the cast, though, goes to our casting directors. We have a team of dire uh, casting directors in LA, Lisa and Sarah, and we have a, a casting director in Toronto, uh, Robin, who does an amazing job. And we all like the idea of Tina. <laughs> Robin's the other show. Yeah. <laughs> Tina, Tina. Um, but we also like to be open to sort of untraditional and unexpected choices in casting. Yeah, we've worked with Doug for a long time and he likes, you know, typically the way the process goes is we look at a wider set of choices and bring a narrower set of choices to Doug. And he likes to be surprised. Um, and so uh, we look for surprises. I mean, I think probably one of the big ones in the, in the cast is uh, um, uh, Thomas. And his father was married to Missy Pyle. Um, 
luckiest guy in the world. Luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> um, but when you meet him and spend time with him, you know why she's with him. Uh, yeah. And, and for me too, in terms of getting to write for these guys, because I came on after the pilot, so I, I got to watch it as a viewer, and I was really inspired by people's performances, and I was like, I want to get to know everybody better. So I'm going to try to write them along with our writing staff, and, and hopefully maybe make you think that Lucas, who starts out like a terrible guy who puts a woman in a trunk of his car, which is crazy, suddenly you're feeling a lot for him by the end, and it's a little confusing, and, and to try to really just make everybody a fully fleshed person. And, and the good news is, is that was the first 10 episodes, and now we get a second season to do it again. So uh, hopefully you'll get to know everybody even more, and, and yeah, we'll go from there. All right, sadly, that is all the time we have here today, but thankfully we have season two of Impulse to look forward to. So 